Have you ever wanted to make 3D prints with your SketchUp models? In this course, I show you how you can get your models ready to print so you can see them in the real world. I'm Brandon Gibbs, and I bring 20 plus years of architecture design 3D fabrication to all my courses. If this is something that's new to you, then you can check out my other courses below to get prepared. This course is for those who have a little bit of experience in 3D and SketchUp, so it'll help you get to the next level with 3D printing. If you're ready to get started with 3D printing your models, then let's go. And just measuring that we're doing meters. Okay, 10 by 10 by 20. So this is the size, might be a you know, moderate size house. Um, uh, knowing that uh, we're going to be um, maybe making a simple gable form. We're going to come up four meters and then we're going to just do this simple mass. Start off with a simple mass and we're going to come up five meters. So if we look at it from the front, we'll see that it's a 45 degree angle, 12 on 12 slope. And um, this is a basic model. It's very easy to to go ahead and print. But let's start thinking about how can we start to make this a little more interesting. I'll go ahead and make this a group. And we're going to work with some of our solid tools so we can see some more articulation. So what if we wanted to have... <clears throat> this form and we wanted to use some of our solid tools and again if you need more understanding with SketchUp the SketchUp guide will help you do, do this um, but now if we want to have something like this where one mass intersects the other um, and we want to, as opposed to doing, a, of course, solid extrusion, which we've we've been doing, we want to come in here and say, let's offset maybe a small distance like this. We can see that we we've extruded. We haven't changed the form. Uh, it's still a solid group. But now that we have this form, and we, if we want to have this cut through here, maybe we come back and we take this. And we're going to erase that little section. And we, we're we continually modeling and make sure everything is correct and in solids. That might not be as easy as it seems when you're modeling. So getting into a workflow will be very helpful. But now that we have that, let's uh, let's work to subtract this solid using we, we select the thing to be subtracted, then we select the thing that will subtract. Okay, so now we can got, start to get interesting with our our modeling. So this I want to I want to export this entire model. And we'll just save this as intricate house. And uh, we'll look at a little bit more into the structure of a model when we're using a 3d print from it okay so now let's uh, let's we saved it we'll export it I'm just gonna use the basic settings make sure that it's in centimeters and we're gonna export everything so we we didn't select anything we'll just export everything export that and now we're gonna open that and look at it and repetitor we're going to load this model and take a look at it and how it will import. We'll do 0.1, so we have 1 to 100 scale. And so let's see how long this sort of form will take. And if there's any reason 
that it needs to be changed so we can print it properly because obviously it's it's not just a solid mass there's going to be a part and this is where I say about the structure that's going to be over nothing so does it need a support does it not need a support let's uh, go ahead and just do it as it is All right like the basic settings um, we, we are going to be using a little bit of a brim and I've said to have no support so let's see how that prints takes a little bit long because it's a bit ma bigger mass but we know exactly the scale that we're getting as we're starting this now we have our model extruded and it's a solid model and we're looking here at it it's very big so we might either make it 1 to 200 um, it's also taking longer, longer to look around but um, it's seeming like it's it's doable. Um, we're going to look inside of it and we see uh, that it's going layer by layer. Let's go ahead and choose a smaller layer range so we see what's happening as it goes up. More specifically what happens when it is starting to cantilever over. So one thing that's important is always to make sure you know where a model might fall apart and this little area where it's starting to uh, go over blank space might be a problem so that's an example where we would use a support so I'm gonna go ahead and to add a support uh, you have to reprint it it makes a support at the same time it slices the model and we're gonna change the scale as well so right now we're using it 1 to 100 Let's do 1 to 200. Make it a little bit smaller. So the first one was 18 hours, which would be very long. Um, and it uses a lot of filament. Now the support actually uses a lot of filament too, but it is quicker. Um, and you'll see the difference now. Now we're going to add a support of um, the parts that are touching the bed. And we're going to look at that. Okay, now we have a fully supported model. So let's see what's happening on the inside. We're showing a layer range. We'll just go peel it back. And now we're seeing a support structure. It's not too bad. It's supporting at the edges of this, this form. It's pretty much making an intermediate form right under the main one. And the way that support works is it, it prints with a, a gap, if you can see right here, a gap between the part that you want to keep and the new new part. And, and there is a setting for different support materials. You don't have to use the same material. There is a material um, called um, PVC, which you can actually just put water on it and it will dissolve. So you can have a perfect model. So now that we have that, uh, we have some basic support. We can see it's not going to take too much longer. Uh, it is in half size, uh, but it's actually taking uh, much fewer hours, and it's a much bigger chance of success for this model. Um, and some of the support right here is just based on its algorithm. And uh, now this model is going to be a little bit clunky because of all this uh, grid structure in between. Uh, let's look at different types of uh, support structures inside. Right now we have it in our configuration a structure as a grid or lines. Alright, so this is uh, the Slicer Prusa edition and it has a bit more options in terms of infill and um, support and brim and the same sort of parameters we were looking at before um, but it has these that we can uh, we can put into into play so I do want to look at some of these so we can um, we can see a different type of support structure 
and we're just going to name this hex. And we'll slice with Prusa. And we'll first just see pretty much is it going to slice a little bit faster? Is it more better, you know, in some sort of way? It's actually faster. It's two hours and 40 minutes. And as we look down, we see that it's it's using a bit of a hex pattern. Um, and it's actually going to be faster. So that's immediately comparing two different slicers. And we also have the option of uh, actually, if we override the settings, we can remove the supports. So we, we have this whole going with the supports or going without supports. And so now it does some automatic supports. So as opposed to our customized setting, it just removes the supports. Um, but we can also, uh, it, it adds these honeycomb supports, but we also can, um, change that to zero with the, our infill density. And we slice that again. It slices very fast. And now you see that there is no support. Now, it depends on the type of shape you're using. This shape actually might be fine without any support. But it's obviously going to print a little bit faster. It's not going to print that much faster. And since you don't really need anything in here, um, you know, there's no reason that you need it. You, you need it hollow. You might as well just add that support so that it doesn't fall apart. Again, this is something you want to test. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about 3D printing and SketchUp. Check the description below for the next video in this series. And if you really need some more understanding about SketchUp or 3D printing, there's also links to my courses. I hope you've enjoyed this content. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. And please like and subscribe if you would like more of this content. Thanks for joining me and I wish you the best in your 3D making.